I've been into this whole salvage, salvage, denim thing for, uh, give or take, 12 years. And over those 12 years, you really better believe that I've made a bunch of mistakes. So please, please learn from those mistakes. And to help you do that, I've put together nine things that I fucked up so you don't have to. Why nine? I don't know, I just came up with nine. First, we're gonna go through a few things that you should definitely avoid when you're first buying your salvage denim jeans. Then we're gonna move on to a few things that you can fuck up when you've been in the jeans for a while. We're gonna end with, with possibly the most important piece of advice that I can possibly give you in relation to raw salvage denim. Okay, first up, and this should really be an obvious one, buy jeans that fit you. Jeans that fit you. I'm, I'm still shocked that this myth of buying a pair of salvage denim jeans, of raw salvage denim jeans, one size smaller. I, I'm so surprised that that myth still persists. The, the basic notion behind the, this, uh, this myth is that the denim is going to, to stretch to, to, to fit you perfectly. So let me go on record here and say that this is complete and utter horseshit. Yes, the denim is going to stretch a little bit, but it's more going to stretch to accommodate you rather than fit you. Which means they're just gonna distort and bag out in some really weird ways. You can always tell a pair of jeans that have been, that have been bought too small. And as an added issue with this, uh, it's really not good for the denim. It's just gonna put an added level of strain on the, the normal strain points. Like a pair of jeans that are bought too small, I can guarantee after a very short period of time, just a couple of months, you're gonna have a crotch blowout and it's just gonna lead to a bunch of other problems. When it comes to the right size, here are a few basic rules to follow. The jeans should be snug, but not tight. The top button should be easy to do up. You should have no problem with that. You should be able to sit down, crouch down, get on and off a bike, get in a car. Basically, you should be able to go about your daily business normally without feeling like you're about to have a hernia. And you should be comfy. That's really the main thing here. These things have to be comfortable. Yes, they're gonna feel a little bit different than, than then maybe mall bought jeans if that's where you're coming from, but they still should be comfortable. Okay, next, buying jeans that are too heavy. You should definitely not buy jeans that are too heavy. This goes for new denim heads, this goes for old denim heads, this goes for all denim heads. But just in case you really are new to, to the world of, of salvage denim, then here's a, a quick breakdown of weight. The, the thickness of denim fabric, so the, the weight of the denim fabric, is measured in ounces per yard. So 12 ounces and under would be a lightweight, uh, about 12 to 15 ounces is a middle weight, and then 16 and above, that's considered heavyweight. And for some stupid unknown reason to, to me, uh, the, the, the denim weight goes all the way up to, to 35, 36 ounces. Don't, just, don't. Denim that is too heavy just leads to a very uncomfortable pair of jeans. And, and like the, the previous point, comfort is, is really the, the key point here. A comfortable pair of jeans is a pair of jeans that you're gonna reach for more often, you're gonna spend more time in, and you're gonna get more enjoyment out of. And this just all leads to some really, really sick fades, which I know isn't maybe the, 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 the main point, but also it's kind of the main point. So if this is your first pair, hell, even if this is your 12th pair, do yourself a favor and don't wander much above the 12 ounce mark. Any higher than that, you just get some serious diminishing returns. Between that, that 12 and that 15 ounce mark, so the midway denim, the denim is gonna be heavy enough to be durable enough to, to last like a good long time. And with that, you're gonna get some really nice fading potential, and it's gonna be wearable most of the year round. So again, more time spent in the jeans. Of course, this depends on, on where you live. It, it's gonna be comfortable enough so you can actually bend down if you drop your keys. Right, number three, buying unsamphorized denim for your first pair of jeans. And luckily, this is becoming more and more difficult because fewer and fewer brands are actually offering a true pair of, of unsamphorized jeans. And again, just to, to catch up to you guys here, Unsamphorized denim is denim that's not gone through the samphorization process. It's the un part of the unsamphorized that should give you the clue. And samphorization of, of denim fabric, or indeed of, of any fabric, is uh, an industrialized process in which the fabric is stabilized. Through a, a series of, of steaming, of stretching, and of, of sorcery, 
all the, the inherent stretch and all the inherent twist that comes with it, with a fabric, it is kind of beaten out of it. And this just means that when the, the fabric is, is taken and sewn into a pair of jeans, you're not gonna end up shrinking them two sizes the first time you wash them. Levi's shrink to fit. That is the most famous example of unsamphorized denim. It's also the most famous example of a brand turning an inherent product flaw into a feature through marketing. While Lee and Wrangler were busy samphorizing their denim or weaving broken twill denim, Levi's was saving a lot of money making their customers do it themselves. It's actually very smart. Total purist denim heads will absolutely swear that this leads to, to better fades, that it's more authentic. I swear to God. Swear to me! Yeah, this is nonsense and this this whole sitting in a tub while the jeans shrink down to fit you and then wear them till they're dry it might look like a fun thing to do but trust me i've tried it like i said i've made all these mistakes i've tried it it's very uncomfortable and very messy save yourself the hassle and along with saving yourself the hassle it's also an inherently unpredictable it is very rare that you're going to end up with a perfectly fitting pair of jeans you're going to end up with a pair that's too big or too small or too short or too long whatever it, it just, it's not worth it. And if you really want to go the unsamphorized route, then go for a one washed pair. That's where a brand has taken unsamphorized denim, sewn it into a pair of jeans, and done the washing for you. That just means that you're gonna get the, the size that's actually advertised. You're gonna get a pair of jeans that fit you, and you can see above or earlier to why that's important. Okay, what are we up to? Number, number four, I think so. Anyway buying too many pairs of jeans and this is one that i really really struggle with you you can see here i really struggle with it you can see up there i, I really really struggle with it this is um what i deem as a collection that's how i justify it to myself the actual jeans that i've got in rotation just now i've got one 14 ounce indigo pair i've got one stone wash pair and i've got one black pair that to me is what I call restraint. A few years back, I was going absolutely nuts. I was a complete magpie for this shit. If any small little variation on a theme, like some special contemporary cut, some special heritage cut, some weird slubby denim, some weird weaving technique, some, some weird dyeing technique, some other weird dyeing technique, I just, I had to have it and ended up with far, far too many jeans that anybody could ever wear in a lifetime. I still have far, far too many jeans that anybody could wear in a lifetime, but it's better than it was. But anyway, my main point here is buy the right pair of jeans in the right size in around about a 14 ounce denim and really wear them and really enjoy them, really wear them out, beat the crap out of them. Once they're done, once they're totally done, then move on. Okay. Point, one, two, three, four, point five, being a brand zombie. Now this could be termed as, as brand loyalty, but loyalty, like any inherently good thing, if it's taken too far, it becomes a bad thing. This isn't the same thing as, as finding your perfect fit from a certain brand and just buying it year after year, decade after decade. That I get. What I mean by this is the guy that, that was dressing normally, that maybe just getting into salvage denim, and then all of a sudden he looks like, or he thinks he looks like an extra from the Sons of Anarchy. Jackie boy. In reality, he looks like a Smurf. And this is a pretty easy one to avoid. If you look in the mirror, and you look like a miner from the 1850s or a, a Dust Bowl refugee, then you might have gone a little bit too far into the repro world. Or if you're more than 50% dressed in, I really don't like to name names here. Uh, let's just say it rhymes with Byron Bart. Yeah, if you're more than 50% dressed in Byron Bart, then you've gone too far. You've got to explore this wonderful world of salvage denim and you've got to really find out which each individual brand has to offer. And in doing that, it's a fun process and you're not just a slave to one brand's vision. Okay, you've been in your, in your well-fitting, mid-weight jeans, paired with a nice mix of other brands for, for a good while now. That means it's time to wash your jeans. And I know, I know, you've been told not to wash your jeans. You've been told that if, wash, if you wash your jeans, you're gonna ruin them. You blew it! But trust me, please, you have to wash your jeans. You don't have to wash them that often, but you still have to wash them. And for, for, for the very simple reason that your jeans are gonna last longer, 
Not to mention that you're going to be more hygienic and you're going to be more welcomed in confined spaces. The jeans are going to last longer because A, washing removes all the dirt and the dust and the grime that builds up really down in the core of the yarns that just acts as like a little grinding paste that just breaks down the yarns. And then B, it's going to, to tighten up these yarns again and just make them stronger, make them, make them more dense, make them more resilient to wear. A, a good rule of thumb that I stick to is around about three months of wear before the first wash. Then after that, maybe a wash every, every month. That is unless there is another issue. Now, I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again. I was once asked, like legitimately asked, the guy wasn't taking the piss. He asked me how to get dog shit out of his jeans without washing them. You don't. You wash them. You, you dirty, dirty boy. Washing is going to have absolutely no discernible effects on your jeans. Actually, no, that's not true. It will. The, the jeans are going to last longer, so you're going to be able to wear them for longer, so the fades are going to be even better. And, and washing your jeans has just got, uh, got one huge benefit. You're not nasty. Now, I said that washing will have no discernible negative effects on your jeans whatsoever. And that's absolutely true, but it's only going to be true if you do this one very important step. And that is turn the jeans inside out before you wash them. This is essential. This is to avoid those nasty vertical fade lines that you get when, when you're washing them in the washing machine. Really, it's that simple, right? I've, I've lost count of which number this is, but anyway, um, repairing your jeans too late, that's also something that's gonna fuck them up. Even if you have the, the perfectly fitting pair of jeans, even if you've washed them on the regular, you've taken care of them like this, these things are made of cotton. Uh, at one point, they are gonna be in need of a little love and repair. And if you wait till there's like a proper big blowout, then this is gonna be much, much harder. If you're a little proactive about it, then it doesn't become a problem. So from, I don't know, maybe for, for myself, at around about the, the fourth month, I, I keep an eye on, on my most common problem areas. That's the crotch, definitely. Maybe the knees and sometimes the back of the knees. And if I see that the denim is, is getting thin, if it's getting very, very soft to the touch, if it's getting a little bit papery, then, and oh, and also if you, if you hold up the light and the light shines through really easily, then it's time to take them for, for maintenance. This is maintenance over repair. Repairs are a problem, maintenance is easy. Okay, so according to my, my script over here, this is the last one, so I guess this is number nine. But really, this is the, the most important point of this entire list. And this is something you definitely should do or shouldn't do. Anyway, you shouldn't listen to me or anybody else about your jeans. These are your jeans. This is your journey. Hell, if you want to go and buy a pair of 25 ounce Byron Barts and then two sizes too small, wear them for 18 months without washing, and then when it does come to washing, you wash them the right way out, Hell, go ahead and go. As much as I do really love this, this little world of salvage denim that we've got going on here, I do find it to be very gatekeepy in some respects, which to, to somebody who's maybe just entering this world, it can be quite disheartening. And, and being a gatekeeper is something I really, really try to avoid. Uh, what I've talked about here is just a list of things that over the years, I've come to the conclusion that I've done them wrong and I've also seen other people come to the same conclusion after a while. And so I just thought it was gonna possibly help a few folks out. In the end, as I said, these are your genes. Wear them, enjoy them, use them, abuse them, don't baby them. But there I go, lecturing again. Okay, now it is time to sign off. All uh, right, outros. Um, yes, I would actually be very interested to know, genuinely interested to know, if there's something you guys want to add to this list. I'd be very curious about that. You can leave a comment the, the, in the comments below. That's where you leave comments. Uh, while you're on your way down there, if you're not already, like, subscribe, you know what to do with all that. Uh, what else is down there? There is a sign up for the no news, good news newsletter. There's the CRD sales page. So if you're looking to get into salvage denim, you can find yourself a bargain there. I really recommend that. And I think that just leaves me to say, oh, one second down there. Uh, this is something new that I just sorted out a minute ago. Down there, there is a code to the, the show your hem goods, the, the, show your hem goods that I covered in the last video, I think. Yeah, um, show your hem is an Indonesian leather manufacturer. Uh, we've been working together for a while and this code sorts you out with a 10% discount. So that is definitely worth checking out. His stuff is incredible 
incredibly, incredibly good. Really, it's wonderful. I, I don't say that lightly, so there's that down there as well. And now, that just leaves me to say, guys, I hope you're happy and healthy out there. Hope you're taking care of yourselves. Hope you're taking care of each other. And I'm going to see you in the next video.